Hi, I'm Akshaj here with one of our fantastic first grade teachers, Mrs. Ellis. Last year she taught second grade and she has also taught third, fifth, and kindergarten. Let's get to know her a little bit better. Hey, Mrs. Ellis, Mrs. Ellis how long have you been teaching at Forest Park? I've been teaching at Forest Park for five years. What made you want to become a teacher? Well, when I was in elementary school, it was a little challenging for me. So when I went to college, I thought it would be a great idea to uh, go into teaching. What else do you like to do for fun? I like to knit, I like to go to the beach, and I like to play with my boys. Do you have any children or pets? <laughs> yes, I have three boys. Uh, their ages are 14, 11, and 11, and no pets. What is your favorite book? I have two favorite books. My first is Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls and also The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I would first, before I go anywhere uh, worldwide, I would like to explore the treasures in the United States like the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore, the Grand Canyon. On behalf of all our students at Forest Park, thank you Mrs. Ellis for your service to our school. If you'd like to see your teacher on the Friday show, ask them to volunteer. Thank you. I hope you changed your clocks last weekend because Sunday, March 13th, marked the beginning of daylight savings time in the United States. On this day, most Americans move their clocks forward by an hour. This simple action allows residents to enjoy more daylight during the upcoming spring and summer months. Manipulating the clocks to take advantage of longer days was first proposed in 1784 by American inventor and politician Benjamin Franklin. However, the idea did not start receiving serious consideration until 1907, when British resident William Willett presented it as a way to save energy. In April 1966, daylight savings time finally became a permanent fixture on the American calendar. U.S. officials passed a law to help, to help conserve energy and give farmers more daylight hours to transport fresh produce to markets. These changes have reduced the dark and cold winter months by about five weeks, at least according to the clocks. However, for many Americans, this is not enough for a reason of, of a reason for adjustment. They just want the time change to be canceled altogether. But until those who oppose daylight savings can convince legislators, we have to learn how to survive the dreaded hour loss. Which side are you on? Do you like daylight savings time? Every February 27th, the world celebrates International Polar Bear Day. It is difficult to ignore the plight of the majestic animals when we see pictures of Nora, a polar bear cub that resides at Ohio's Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. Born on November 6th, the adorable baby polar bear is one of two cubs born to the zoo's resident polar bears, Nanook and Aurora. Unfortunately, one cub died soon after birth. Though tragic, it is not unusual given that the survival rate for newborn polar bears in captivity is just 50%. In fact, Nora's sur Nora survival is an unusual event given that none of the polar bear cubs born at o the o Ohio Zoo in the past 27 years have lived beyond the first few weeks. In honor of International Polar Bear Day, the zoo released photos and an update on their precious resident. Turns out that Nora, who was just 1.5 pounds when born, now weighs an impressive 29 pounds. To ensure that she continues to grow, her keepers have begun supplementing her with her food with meat. The officials say Nora is very independent and loves to play with her toys, especially when she is in the pool. Her favorites, a traffic cone and a boomer ball. Unfortunately, the polar bears in the wild are not as lucky as Nora. There are currently believed to be just 20,000 to 25,000 polar bears left in the wild. Experts believe that if the sea ice continues to melt, the numbers could dwindle down to one-third within a few years. The only way to prevent that from happening is to stop global warming. The good news, according to the PMI, is that we can all help save the gorgeous animals from disappearing with a few simple actions. A good place to start is by reducing our energy usage. Another great way to save energy is making sure that our homes are well insulated. The nonprofit estimates that if everyone in the country follows these two strategies, we will cut as much carbon dioxide as is as emitted by 1,600,000 gallons of gasoline. They will also help us save money. Hopefully, Nora's adorable images will spur Americans and people worldwide to make small lifestyle changes that we can save not just the polar bears, but also other animals being impacted by the climate change. Thank you. 
Would you want an autographed jersey and a soccer ball from your favorite soccer player? Well, that's what happened to Murtaza Ahmadi, a five-year-old Afghan boy. He recently received a jersey made out of plastic, which has a customized message from world renowned Argentinian soccer player and UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador Lionel Messi. It was delivered to him by UNICEF. I love Messi and my shirt says Messi loves me, UNICEF quoted Murtaza. After many photographs of him wearing his jersey, he became viral on the internet. Murtaza was also told that he would also receive a visit from Messi, his favorite soccer hero. His brother, 15-year-old Humayon, also helped his fame. Before Murtaza received his real jersey, Humayon said that Murtaza found a plastic bag and told him to make a jersey out of it. It was a perfect fit. Humayon also scribbled Leo Messi's name and his number, 10, on it. And there you have it, an improvised jersey. Who wouldn't want to be Murtaza Amadi? Did you know that snakes used to have limbs? There are currently two theories stating why snakes lost their legs. Some scientists believe that snakes shed their legs to dwell in water. Others think that they evolved from burrowing lizards and lost their legs over time. In July 2015, David Martell stumbled upon a fossil of a four-legged snake snake it inhabited the planet 113 million years ago measuring 20 centimeters from head to toe the skeleton had two tiny one centimeter front legs its hind legs were a little longer longer and larger though the legs were too small for walking they were perfect for catching prey a closer examination revealed that it had no adaptations for surviving in water but it was well suited for burrowing through land this led many scientists to believe that snakes have evolved on land. Now, a new study conducted by Scottish and American scientists further concludes that snakes ditch their legs to escape from predators quicker and pounce on prey. The snakes hearing sharpen and their adaptations to their subterranean habitat cause their legs to, cause their legs to recede until it disappeared completely. Hi everyone, my name is Adaya from 501. Food waste is a growing problem both in the United States and across the globe. In North America alone, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of perfectly edible food ends up in the trash each year. To put it in perspective, that is almost 20 pounds of food per person per month. While the fact that that most ends up in our landfills is bad enough, what's worse is that over 48 million Americans, including 15.3 million kids, live in households that don't have sufficient food. Now concerned citizens are trying to raise awareness of the issue with some innovative ideas. In New York's county, students at 18 schools participate in a program called We Future Cycle. Started by Anna and Ashley in 2014, it teaches kids to recycle, compost, and most importantly, curb food waste in an easy and good manner. Lunch areas at the participating schools are equipped with three clearly marked bins, compost, recycle, and share. While the first two are self-explanatory and common in schools, the third is rare. This is a bin where kids can toss their unwanted drinks, fruits, and even untouched sandwiches. Items in the container are available for any student that wants them. The three bins have helped reduce the number of trash bags generated at the midday meal from an average of 22 to just two. Though that may not sound like much of a plan to save waste, it is because the delicious food is made from perfectly edible and safe ingredients and therefore headed for the compost or trash bin. Another idea is a dumpster meal where people eat untouched food others don't want. Customers have to eat their good meals inside a dumpster. In addition to helping people rethink their actions one dumpster meal at a time, people also help... Help them do good by donating a portion of the proceeds to nonprofit dedicated organizations combating food waste. It is no wonder that hundreds of people are clamoring to dine at his dumpster supper clubs. Thank you. Homework. Just a mention of the word sends shivers up the spines of many kids and adults, too. If you ask the average student about homework, I think they'll all agree that it ranks right up there with eating your vegetables. Many parents just like the battles it causes at home. Fear not, fellow homework haters, we now have science on our side. A recent study found, quote, there is no evidence that any amount of homework improves the academic performance of elementary students. This statement by homework research guru Harris Cooper of Duke University is startling to hear, no matter which side of the homework debate you're on. For elementary age children, research suggests that studying in class gets superior learning results, while extra schoolwork at home is just extra work. The research is very clear, agrees Edda Kravalek, education professor at the University of Arizona. There's no benefit at the elementary school level. 
Cooper compiled 120 studies in 1989 and other 60 studies in 2006. This comprehensive analysis of multiple research studies found no evidence of academic benefit at the elementary level. It did, however, find a negative impact on children's attitudes towards school. Homework does have an impact on young students, but it's not a good one. A child just beginning school deserves a chance to develop a love of learning. Instead, homework at a young age causes many kids to turn against school, future homework, and academic learning. And it's a long road. A child in kindergarten is facing 13 years of homework ahead of them. Homework supporters say that homework teaches responsibility, reinforces lessons taught in school, and creates a homeschool link with parents. However, involved parents can see what's coming home in a child's backpack and initiating sharing and initiate sharing about schoolwork, they don't need to monitor their child's progress with assigned homework. Responsibility is taught daily in many wa- multiple ways. That's what pets and chores are for. It takes responsibility for a six-year-old to remember to bring their hat and lunchbox home. It takes responsibility for an eight-year-old to get dressed, make his or her bed every morning, and get a- make their bed and get out the door every morning. As for reinforcement, that's an important factor, but it's only one factor in learning. Non-academic priorities, good sleep, family relationships, and active playtime are vital for balance and well-being. They also directly impact a child's memory, focus, behavior, and learning potential. Elementary lessons are reinforced every day in school. After school time is precious for the child. What works better than traditional homework at the elementary level is simply reading at home. This can mean parents reading aloud to children as well as children reading. The key is to make sure it's joyous. If a child doesn't want to practice their reading skills after a long school day, then let them listen instead. Any other projects that come home should be optional and occasional. If the assignment does not promote a greater love of school and interest in learning, it has no place in an elementary school age child's day. Elementary school kids deserve a ban on homework. This can be achieved at the family classroom or school level. Families can opt out. Teachers can set a culture of no homework or rare optional homework, and schools can take time to read to read the research and rekindle joy in learning. Homework has no place in a young child's life. Without with no ac- ac- academic benefit, there are simply better uses for after for after school hours. Thank you. My name is Dion. My name is Jackson. My name is Elizabeth. We are from Miss Hayes' second grade class. Today we are going to introduce you a Chinese character. Chui. It means to blow. As you know, Chinese characters are like pictures. So is the word Chui. Chui is composed of ko, a mouth, and chan, a man who is blowing out air. We blow air through our mouths. Read with me. Tway, tway, tway. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mega with this week's weather report. Today there's a high of 71 degrees, a low of 50 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. Tomorrow it's mostly sunny with the highs around 72 degrees, the lows around 54 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. On Sunday, the high temperature is expected to rise to about 72 degrees, and the low temperature will increase to 52 degrees. There will be a 40% chance of rain. That's it for weather, and I'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Chin Mei with this week's brain teasers. Last week's primary brain teaser was, what is as big as an elephant but weighs nothing at all? The answer is an elephant's shadow and the winners are room 211 and 306. Last week's intermediate brain teaser was, whoever makes it doesn't tell anyone. Whoever takes it doesn't know about it. And whoever knows about it doesn't want it. What is it? The answer is counterfeit money and sadly there was no winner. Room 304 did have a creative answer but it wasn't what we were looking for. This week's Primary brain teaser is, I can fly without wings and I cry without eyes. What am I? I repeat, I can fly without wings and I cry without eyes. What am I? This week's intermediate brain teaser is, what is wider than life itself, longer than forever, so simple it's complicated, travels but never leaves a spot, puts others in danger but no one gets hurt, and reaches to worlds unknown. Again, what is wider than life itself, longer than forever, so simple it's complicated, travels but never leaves a spot, Puts uh, puts others in danger, but no one gets hurt, and reaches to worlds unknown. Again, what is wider than life itself, longer than forever, so simple it's complicated, travels but never leaves a spot,
put other puts others in dangers but no one gets hurt and reaches to worlds unknown that's it for brain teasers this week